This is Ibrox. <laughs> Obviously, shortly after that game, well, kind of during that game, really, uh, Pedro Cushina came in. <sighs> Let's not beat around the bush. That didn't work out. Um, original thoughts when he first came in, what were your thoughts on him? Um, I, like like everyone else, didn't really know anything about him. Didn't, didn't know anything about him. Never really seen him in in terms of the betting or or being favourite. From what I can remember, I always seen, right, you, you need someone... Um, who's experienced what it is to be a Rangers manager, has had a bit of success uh, and a bit of stability. What you don't need is someone who hasn't got a clue about what this football club is. Um, you need someone in to hit the ground running because it's kind of, you're into the season. There's no time to to think any different. You need to hit the ground running. You need someone who's experienced it before. So I thought someone like a McLeish or, or whoever the names were, were, might have got in, mm-hmm. um, but Pedro came in, and yeah, I, I, I think I don't think I'll be the only one, but I thought we were surprised. Didn't know what the hell to expect. I think it was quite evident from the outside looking in that I wouldn't say players didn't see eye to eye with them, but didn't have a connection. You could sort of see that. But how long did it take for the boys within the squad who did disconnect with them to have that disconnection? Was it quite fast or was it a case of... I mean, the language was an issue as well, obviously. He didn't speak the great yeah. English, did he? Yeah. I think that was the main... That was probably his main error in terms of the way he got things across um, because his English wasn't perfect. Uh, maybe the way he said things, he didn't mean it in those ways, but the language barrier obviously highlighted it that way. Um, so so that wasn't good for him. Um, and he just, listen, he just had a, a different way of doing things like every manager does. Um, the training sessions were different. Uh, the timings were different. We'd do double sessions. We'd be out on the pits for half an hour, then come in for an hour, then go out again. It's just, there was just a lot of, a lot of change. Um, and I can remember him uh, doing, picking a lot of teams on a Monday. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, which would obviously infuriate a lot of players yeah. because you're out of the team. It's not you're not playing till Saturday, and you're out of the team already. So it's like, and then if if one gets injured, you come in, you know, well, he doesn't like me. Doesn't really, so it was just a bit. Yeah, it's just a bit. It could have been handled differently, but obviously coming to a new culture, a new um, obviously a new country and everything, um, he did struggle with the with the language, and I don't think it helped him. And his staff as well were. Okay, probably a little bit more fluent in English. In, in I think there was definitely one, um, but a few others were, were similar to him and the messages were a little bit mixed and a little bit here and there, which didn't help him. Do you know when he had like the press conferences and he came out with some like mad stuff, do you think yeah. he was actually that mad or do you think that was a language barrier where he couldn't express what he actually meant to say and ended up sounding a bit crackers? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Was it the caravans? And I, I ain't got it. Yeah, I ain't got a clue. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Listen, it's it's a, it's a hard place to, to do an interview because they're always looking for the one little one little slip up, one little misdemeanor, um, and that's the headline. So you've got to be. It's one thing I found. You've got to be bang on it. You've got to be. It's like preparing for a game. Because if, if you go in, in an interview with the with the press and they and they get you, oh sorry, catch you off guard for one second, then you know you slipped up, and it's that's the headline. No matter what you said after it, that is the headline, and that's what they'll run with. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course, is the that's, that's, I am. That that's not me at all. I'm far from like that. <laughs> of course not. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think I remember correctly. I think your last game was hot. Yeah. Yeah. Now, just before that, there was a conversation, if I remember correctly, where I heard this from somewhere, and you, you can correct me if I'm wrong with this, but I think he basically came to you, didn't, and said and said he wasn't going to renew your contract because essentially, in his own way, he didn't rate the footballer that you were. Is that correct? I, just, I, I think I said that might have been a little bit of a language barrier as well, but yeah, we had a chat man-to-man, which was, hey, listen, fantastic. That, that's the way you want to be dealt with as a player. Uh, and he said, listen, next season... Um, you won't be for me. I'm going to be bringing my own players in. 
Um, I don't think you can play uh, the way I want to play. Um, and I said, well, listen, I disagree with you. I, I, I don't I don't agree with what you're saying. Um, but I respect you for, for saying it to my face. Um, and thank you. And listen, I'll do my best for you. No problem until the end of the season. Um, and then I think I played that Hearts game. Yeah. I think we won 2-0, I think. I think we won two 0 I think I, I think I got man of the match. Yeah, my first ever one summer, so I was absolutely buzzing. <laughs> I've just been told I've been released by Rangers, and then the next day you, you you're at there again because you have got a clean sheet. You beat Hearts two 0 and you got man of the match for you know football mates. Um, and I think I said to the I said to the press then I said that that's me. That's um, I'll be leaving at the end of the season. So it was out there. Uh, but I've been carrying a calf issue for couple of weeks before that and it just it went again in the Hearts game so that, that stopped me playing the next friggin two games which I think was Aberdeen at home and St. Johnston away so, so that was my last game as a Rangers player so yeah would have been would have been nice to play the Aberdeen game at home say goodbye people yeah 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 it would have been it would have been but um, hey that, that's the way it is to be fair I, I was lucky enough to God knows how. I managed to go back to that, that Legends game. I don't know how I got in that, but um, against Liverpool. And that was nice to go back and, and go around again and, and give the fans a, a, clap, a clap and away for the appreciation. So at least I got to do that way, which was nice. So a final question. It's probably a very short question that can be answered in a very, very long way. So feel free. Um, but in a way... You'd be very proud and very happy that you, you performed for Rangers despite the fact you were sort of 37. But is there a little bit of you that is a bit good you didn't get the chance to go there earlier and also for a little bit longer? Of course. Of course, I could. Like, the, the lads now must be must be walking on fresh air. Now. Yeah. Must be like, they're like gods. That, that's how mad it is. It's, if you do well for, for that football club and you win trophies and you perform to a high standard at the end of the season, you're winning doubles, trebles, whatever. You're like a freaking god. That's how mad it is. That's how, that's how precious, that's what it is. That's how precious the, the game is to, to Rangers fans, that club. So I can always just think back on, oh, this place must have been phew, fucking fantastic. You know, when, when they're winning the nines and winning the trebles and the doubles, man, them players must have been like, far on a different level. And... Yeah, hopefully those days are on the way back because um, yeah, the, the the fans definitely deserve that. The football club deserve it. So very very pleased to see them back where they belong. 